A new vaccine making its way to our shores, new curfew hours will kick in tonight, and a 17-year-old juvenile appears in court for murder. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tyler Simona with your JCN News for this Wednesday, August 11th. Thanks for staying with us. With close to 1,000 COVID-19 cases recorded in the Bahamas for the month of August alone, and with the country at one point having a limited supply of COVID-19 vaccines, more than 100,000 doses of a new vaccine will arrive in country on Thursday. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis making the announcement in the House of Assembly this morning. JCN's Liz Bastian has that report in our top story tonight. The long-awaited Pfizer vaccine will be in country tomorrow, Thursday, August 12th, and that's more than 120,000 doses. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, just before he began his contribution to the debate to extend the country's state of emergency another three months, announced that a number of additional vaccines are on the way. One such, the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, donated by the United States government. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARPA, informed the government of the Bahamas that tomorrow, Thursday, August 12th, the Bahamas will receive 128,700 doses of the Pfizer vaccine. These 128,000 doses, according to the Prime Minister, represents the first tranche of 397,000 doses that will be received from the U.S. Dr. Minnis thanked the U.S. government, including the U.S. Embassy here in country, who assisted. He also thanked regional public health partner CARFA for facilitating the donation. Now, Dr. Minnis on Monday during his national address advised that negotiations have been concluded to bring in a substantial number of new vaccines, that more doses of vaccines will arrive in country over the next few months. Along with the doses we will receive tomorrow, the vaccine supply we already received and other doses on the way over the next weeks and months, we will have the capacity we will have the capacity to vaccinate all Bahamians and residents who wish to receive the vaccine. A new category of individuals who can receive the vaccine has been added. The Prime Minister notes that the Pfizer vaccine will be available to 12 to 17 year olds with the consent of a parent or guardian, but not leaving out adults. Mr. Speaker, our vaccine supply will allow us to give a significant percentage of our population protection. And this will in time lessen the likelihood that we will have a large scale surge that cause extremely high hospitalization. The arrival, Mr. Speaker, of these vaccines is extraordinary news. It is some of the best news we have received during this pandemic. This is a part of the, of the hope my government has been working toward for many months. With regard to vaccines, we are nearing the full capacity to bring much of the emergency period of the COVID-19 pandemic to an end. The Prime Minister commended those who have volunteered in distributing and administering the vaccine and is again making an appeal for more volunteers to come forward to assist in the process. I ask more Bahamians to volunteer so that they can do their part in assisting to eradicate this pandemic that we are facing and to aid our fellow Bahamian brothers. I send a notice out to various lodges and other organizations to please volunteer your services so that we can complete our mission as quickly as possible. 
As of yesterday, the Bahamas has administered a total of 111,305 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. A total of 1,689 doses were administered in the Bahamas. 1,225 or 73% were first doses and 464 or 27% were second doses. These were doses administered in New Providence and Grand Bahama. There are over 7,500 appointments available and booked for this week for New Providence and Grand Bahama. Walk-up appointments are available at the Church of God of Prophecy on East Street and St. Anselm's Parish on Burnett Road here in the capital and the Susan J. Wallace Community Center on Grand Bahama for those without access to online appointment portals. If you wish to volunteer to assist in the vaccination process, you can contact Vaccine Consultative Committee members Dr. Barry Rassen by email at barryjrassen at gmail.com or Mr. Ed Fields at etonyfields at gmail.com. For JCN News, I'm Lissy Bastian. Due to the rise in COVID-19 and positive cases, new curfew hours are set to kick in tonight. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis announced the new measures during his national address on Monday. For New Providence, Paradise Island and Grand Bahama, curfew hours will be from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. On Abaco Mainland, curfew hours will be from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Due to the new case numbers improving on Bimini, the curfew will be moved from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. The curfew on North and South Eleuthera, including Harbor Island, will continue to be from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. The Prime Minister wishes to note that curfews will be strictly enforced and that enforcement is being increased. The Bahamas is not the only country in the region experiencing an uptick in COVID-19 cases. During a virtual press conference this morning, Director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, says that cases and deaths continue to rise in certain areas of Central America, and the Caribbean is no different. In the Caribbean, we are witnessing a similar story in the more populous islands. Cases are rising in Cuba, Jamaica, and Puerto Rico, as well as in Martinique and the Bahamas. Over the past month, Infections increased 30-fold in Martinique, and there has been a significant spike in hospitalization. In Dominica, cases are rising as well. Dr. Etienne informs that although cases are surging in certain areas, there is clear evidence that wherever vaccines are available, they limit severe illness and save lives. This is why PAHO contends that increasing access to vaccines remains their top priority. Dr. Etienne also warns against vaccine disparity. More than six months after the first doses arrived in our region, the disparity in who can access vaccines and who cannot is unacceptable. Fewer than 20% of people in Latin America and the Caribbean have been fully immunized. And in some countries, that number is less than 5%. But this disparity is also dangerous. There is no path to recovery for any country while its neighbors remain vulnerable and while variants circulate and multiply. We must banish the idea that vaccine inequity is the problem of some countries and not others. And instead, we need to work together to find solutions for all countries. Now, when it comes to vaccines in the country, tomorrow the country is set to receive 120,000 doses of Pfizer and 40,000 Johnson & Johnson by the end of August. A 17-year-old juvenile appeared before Magistrate Samuel McKinney on Wednesday afternoon to be formally arraigned for the August 4th murder of Rudolph Roberts, which occurred on Marigold Farm Road, a dirt track off of Joe Farrington Road. According to the police, the facts are that sometime around the midnight hour on the day in question, gunshots were heard in the area of Marigold Farm Road, also known as the Haitian Village. When police arrived, they discovered a male with apparent gunshot wounds. Emergency medical services were called and pronounced the victim dead. Now, the juvenile lawyer Wendon Frazier noted to the court that her client is a patient of Sandalins and has a letter from doctors, which says he has a mental health problem and asks if he can be remanded to Sandalins Rehabilitation Center. 
Magistrate McKinney said that the court will inquire if there is any available space and if the facility was secure. The 17-year-old juvenile has been remanded to the Adolescent Center at the Bahamas Department of Corrections Services. The Crown will serve him a voluntary bill of indictment on November 9th. The Ministry of Finance hosting a virtual press conference Wednesday morning updating the public on the recently enacted package of legislation intended to modernize and transform public finance, procurement and statistical operations within the Bahamas. One of those in the package being the Public Procurement Act, which will take effect on September 1st. Starting on the aforementioned date, the procurement process for all departments, agencies, ministries and state-owned enterprises will be governed by this new act. Gaynell Roll, the Undersecretary in the Ministry of Finance, spoke on a few things that would change under this act. The procurement process is moving online. To receive tender notices and requests for quote, all businesses must be registered on the e-procurement and supplier registry. To date, over 2,200 businesses are registered on the system. This was an optional process in the past, but now businesses must be registered or they will miss out on opportunities to secure government contract when the new law takes effect on September 1. Approximately 33 agencies have been trained to date on the new legislation and are currently undergoing further training on the online portal. Additionally, every government agency will be required to produce a detailed procurement plan at the start of the budget year and publish this report on the official website of the Public Procurement Department. The Ministry of Finance will be conducting ongoing training and public education regarding the new act. It is for us a priority to have all businesses registered on the e-procurement and suppliers registry. So we do not want anyone to miss out on an opportunity to do business with the government once the new law takes effect September 1. So we encourage businesses to visit our website at suppliers.gov.bs and get registered. Today. The new law also makes provisions for the Minister of Finance to allocate a percentage of the procurement budget to small businesses, which are businesses with no more than 50 employees and a revenue of under $1 million annually. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.